So let's just start off. Um, you know, you've often said that your mission is to eliminate small talk. So I'm wondering how that became important to you and what impact you think it's going to have to eradicate small talk. Yeah. Before uh, anybody gets too angry, I'll clarify that uh, for me, small talk has nothing to do with the content of a conversation. Um, it has to do with the, the process. And so um, I have had a conversation about the weather that I would absolutely put in the category of conversation that mattered deeply. It happened to be with a man named Eugene Clodio, who is a meteorologist, and we were studying seasonal affective disorder. But the idea is like you can talk about the weather if the process, if you're really curious about it, if it matters, et cetera. And so um, I got clear a few years ago on a, this kayak camping retreat in the middle of nowhere, Maine, um, and the intention was to kind of disconnect from the world, reconnect with yourself, um, and some higher purpose if you believe there even is one. And very much to my surprise on that trip, um, I got really crystal clear language that was, Chad, you exist to gently eradicate small talk and create conversations that matter. Um, and. After that, all these like little flashes of um, notable historical figures showed up for me. And so can you imagine like Buddha or Gandhi or Rosa Parks or Jesus or anybody else uh, who like has made history in some way walking up to you and saying, how was your weekend? I'm, I'm sure they did it, right? I'm, 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 total, I'm sure that all of them at some point asked a question uh, like that. But I think the people in my uh, life who like really change things and shift things have a way of cutting to the heart of what matters. Um, and so, you know, a mentor of mine, uh, Jeff, 15 minutes before I got married, walked straight up to me, no niceties, no hellos, put his hand on my shoulder and just said, are you present? Because you really don't want to miss your own wedding. And 10 years ago, I'm really glad he did that because I was actually uh, there. And so I think... Um, a couple, to answer your question, like specifically and concretely, I think we could probably double the amount of good stuff that happens in the world if we cut out like idle chit chat just because. Now, I still think you can ask, how are you? What do you do? Where are you from? All these questions and have it uh, matter. But I think it's also interesting to note, like we're, we get in such a routine with the questions we ask that uh, just by disrupting those questions a little bit, uh, we tend to ask better questions because they're more intentional, they're more thoughtful. We're not just like plugging the cassette in and just letting the tape play. Um, and when we move off of autopilot, that's useful. Mm. I'm really curious um, about the role of trust in eradicating small talk, right? Because if you hadn't met me and I came up to you 10 minutes before your wedding and said, are you present? You're like, you're in my way. <laughs> I'm on the way of the runway, get out of the way, right? So. Um, yeah. Curious your thoughts about that. So let's let's go back to that scenario. Um, let's pretend we hadn't met, which we hadn't 10 years ago. And let's pretend you crashed my wedding and you walked up to me. I think it's an interesting hypothetical experiment to, to think about. How could you ask that same question and have it be received well? Uh, it's a, just an interesting thought experiment. And I wonder, and this is what... Uh, first chapter of Ask Powerful Questions focuses in on is being clear about your intent and sharing it with the person that it affects. And so if I, if you didn't know me and you crashed my wedding and you walked up to me and you said, hey, I recognize, I've got a question for you and I recognize it's a little bit strange because we haven't met yet, but when I got married, it was really, really useful when somebody else asked me this question. Can I ask it? Right? So I've like shared a really clear intent. It's framed in the benefit of the other. And I've also seeked consent. And all before I asked that like that bigger question. And so um, if you do those things, what might happen is they choose to not play the game and they're like, no, please don't ask me this question. Uh, or they choose to like curl up or back off in some way. Um, but I think people are more willing to answer difficult, unusual curiosity based questions if, if you're clear about your intent and you ask them for permission uh, first. So. That said, yeah, it's a lot easier to just go for it if you have a relationship of trust already established with somebody. But being clear about your intent and seeking their permission builds trust as quick as I know how. Because um, you're not going to like walk up to somebody and read them your bio and be like, see, I'm not a serial killer. <laughs> yeah. Context is everything, isn't it? Right? I mean, yep. really understanding that context is really important. 